right about now. All right. Welcome, everybody, to Hump Day Hangouts, episode 330. Today is the 10th of March, 2021. We got almost everyone here. Maybe Hernan will uh, show up here in a couple of minutes. Uh, we got a couple of announcements today, some things we want to go over, and then we are going to get into the questions. But uh, I want to say hi real quick, get everyone uh, to see how they're doing. Uh, if you're watching, by the way, go ahead and let us know how you're doing. Uh, if you're watching live, you can pop that right on the page. Uh, say hello. Uh, let us know what's going on. So I'll just uh, go down my list here. I see Chris is first. So Chris, how are you doing today? Good. Glad to be here. Super excited. Um, yeah, can't complain. Weather is getting, actually spring is almost here. Like it's weather is being really good here. Um, so I can't wait that you're actually going to lift um, the lockdowns at some point, hopefully. And uh, it's all outside time. Very nice. All right. Marco, how about you? How you doing today? Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I started going off in, in, into that fake background, <laughs> into that fake Costa Rican background. It's impossible for it to be this nice 365, but you've seen it, right? It's been over, actually March, February. We I came to this house February of last year, just before we got locked down. And you guys have seen it live for, for 52 weeks. It is what it is, man. It's beautiful. I, I keep telling people it's the price I pay for the life I live. This is what I choose. This is not where I have to be. This is where I choose to be. If you want that moment, if you want that, it's called POFU, position of fuck you. We do POFU live where we go in and, and, and we have a bunch of experts giving presentation, then there's me giving you my mindset. And not, not that I'm calling myself an expert. I'm, I just, it's what I do for both. We'll try to get you in the right mindset so that you go and do the things that you need to do and that you have to do in order to be able to do the things that you want to do. It's funny how that works out. First, you have to do and you need to do, and then you can do whatever you want because you're at that position where you can decide whatever it is that's best for your life. So it's just fantastic. And we were just talking about how it is that we're going to do it. And that's coming. Not only is that coming, but uh, I'll just tease it a little bit. Syndication Academy. Oh, yeah. Syndication Academy is in the can. The videos are recorded. We have 300 website updates to go through or over 300. There's a couple of them that, that, that Essie, the Syndication Academy, I don't know what she is. She, she's just fantastic. Instructor. We'll just call her the instructor, the Syndication Academy instructor, the person who's going to be guiding you, the person who's going to be giving you support in Facebook. She will be in there daily supporting the group. It's an overhaul. It's a complete overhaul. It's a complete, completely different idea. The concept stays the same. You have to expand your entity, expand that footprint, let Google know everything that belongs to your entity, make it known, make it better, hook it up all together so that the power flows the way that it's supposed to. Syndication Academy is fantastic. Our trainer, instructor, she's fantastic. She will be up giving you webinar updates every month, you know, called two, three websites. Uh, and again, she'll be in the Facebook group. I, I think it's, 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 it's going to totally rock. And, and, and you guys, for you guys wondering, because somebody did ask me, well, if you guys do it in uh, Syndication Academy Networks and MDYB, then why should I buy Syndication Academy? Well, I just said that we will be adding 300, well, looking through 300 websites to see how they can be manip manipulated and added into the syndication networks that we build. RVAs, it'll take a while for them to catch up. And if we do offer the service, we can't offer everything that we will be adding to Syndication Academy. We always add what's most important, what, what, what's, what, what we think you must have as far as that footprint goes, as far as that entity. But there's others, and we're going to have fantastic opportunities. Like when, when we came across, uh, 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 now it, it's slipping my mind, but um, oh boy. Where we added all of the, where you can add all the drive stacks, all of the folders and uh, pearl trees. Pearl, pearl trees, yeah. yeah. Came across that and it was fantastic and it wasn't originally in it. It was a webinar update. And that became part of the syndication networks, right? Or, or part of the ad ID. Drive stack, yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, it's just it's just a, a fantastic website. So all of those will be will be coming. There's plenty of other website us, websites out there. As a matter of fact, I was telling you guys yesterday that one of the ones that's already in the can is a fantastic website. It's a fantastic semantic hub. And it's, it's just a really novel way to approach SEO. So SESEO, yeah. Bradley coined that, will be with us. She's fantastic again. And so I'm really, really looking forward to uh, working with her on expanding and making Syndication Academy way, way better than what it is. And it's fantastic already. Outstanding. Well, I got nothing to add on to that. I wanted to make sure we touched on it. Uh, it's coming up and I just put on the early access uh, opt-in. So if you want to be first to be notified, uh, there's definitely going to be something special for people who are on the early access list. So if you're pumped about Syndication Academy, you just want to find out more, you're thinking, hey, this may be for me, maybe for my clients, good way to make money, um, a way to get more exposure, better rankings, more traffic, all of that. Hop in on the early access list. Um, if you're not watching this live and you're checking it out on YouTube, just go to semanticmastery.com slash HD questions and you can uh, find the link there and get that all taken care of. Um, let's see, as I go through here, I realize we haven't said hello to uh, Mr. Johnny come lately, also known as Hernan. How's it going, buddy? Good, man. I'm, I'm banging on the door and it's <laughs> rainy and cold outside and you guys won't let me in. <laughs> I'm dripping wet. On the outside looking I, in. Yeah, man. Come on, let me in. I'm good, man. I'm happy to be here. Outstanding. Last but not least, Bradley, how you doing? Good, man. Happy to be here. It's freaking warm all of a sudden in Virginia. It's like 70, de almost 70 degrees outside. It's crazy. It's like, you know, three days ago it was cold and I had sweatshirts on and space heaters up here. And now it's like <laughs> hot. Oh, that time of year, man. Spring is around the corner and I'm happy for it. That's uh, Things get really busy for my tree contractors come springtime and stay that way all the way through fall so I'm, I'm looking forward to this season for sure nice 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 uh well bradley we had a cool conversation all of us did with somebody yesterday so you mentioned uh the cold email mastery course that you went through and you mentioned that on uh hump to hangups last week and we uh ended up hooking up with daniel yesterday and talking to him so you mind telling people a little bit about what we might end up uh what they might see from from you and him yeah we so i mentioned a really good uh cold email course that I picked up about, I don't know, maybe three weeks ago now. And it was really good and it's inexpensive. Uh, there's a ton of value for what you pay for it. And uh, I'm not going to mention it now because we're going to talk about it when, with, with Daniel, uh, I'm going to jump on a call with uh, a video call with, uh, Daniel over the next two weeks or so. And he's going to go through his methods that he teaches in the training and how to specifically apply it because he does all email marketing for all kinds of stuff. Um, but he's going to talk about how to apply his methods specifically for prospecting for clients, um, for, con for, con you know, for, for consultants and for agencies. And um, so I think that's going to be really valuable. It's not going to be a live webinar. Him and I are going to jump on and, and just him and I are going to banter back and forth and he'll go through some demonstrations that will all be recorded. And then we're going to present that to you guys. Um, again, I, I picked it up for myself and I was blown away by, I thought it was really, really good. Let's put it that way. And um, so Adam reached out to him and got it set up and we had a meeting with him yesterday and he's stoked and um, real cool guys, a lot like Marco and that <laughs> he, uh, he's not politically correct when it comes to speech. And it's, it's great. I love that kind of um, instruction. And uh, so it's real punchy, real to the point, no fluff and all that. And so I'm looking forward to having a video call with him that we can bring to you guys um, for those of you that are looking for to, to generate more clients for your business, it's, it's a, it's a really good strategy. Awesome. Yeah. And I'll just say for those of you who are listening, or again, if you're not live, you can uh, leave this on the replay on YouTube. If you guys have any questions uh, about cold emailing, so B2B is what this is, right? You're not just emailing people, you're emailing Correct. businesses as, a, as an agency. If you've got any questions, uh, pop them in there, you know, and if we can, we'll work those in and, and get those answered. Cause he's got a lot of background in that. I know Bradley, I mean, uh, most of us, I think have at least some experience, but Daniel certainly got a lot. So that'd hey, be you great know, time. Just a quick met note for internal processes. We might want to post in our groups a little survey about questions about cold email, yeah. uh, prospecting, post them here, and we can incorporate that into the video call I do with him. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, Bradley, just let me know um, when you're going to, when you guys set up the call, and I'll do that okay. a couple of days before. So, sure. 
Uh, real quick before we jump into questions, just wanted to say to everyone, if you're new to uh, SM and MGYB, I know we get new people. Uh, we see that a lot of people commenting and we love it. We know there's more people out there who just watch and that's cool too. Uh, but if you're wondering where to get started, uh, the best place you'll hear us talking about stuff like the SEO Shield and syndication networks and all this other stuff. Uh, but go to theseoshield.com, grab that. It's free training. Find out how you can shield your site. You don't have to worry about algorithm updates. Uh, and you'll find out a little bit more about what we're talking about, why this stuff makes sense, how it works, and then where you can get it. So like Marco mentioned, you can go get this stuff done for you if you want. That's great. Go to mgyb.co. If you want to more maybe understand the nuts and bolts or build your own team and start building this stuff out, then of course, you know, we have the training available as well. Um, beyond that, if you want to find out more about getting uh, repeatable SEO results, you can grab the battle plan at battleplan.semanticmastery.com. Uh, if you're looking at an agency or you're a consultant and you want to grow and become an agency, 2xyouragency.com is the place to be. And then last but not least, uh, if you're ready to grow your digital marketing business or for some people, they're brick and mortar and they want to expand the online side, the mastermind is the place for you. You can find out more about that at mastermind.semanticmastery.com. And with that, I think we should dive into the questions unless you guys got anything else. Mm, oh, I'm excited about Syndication Academy launch. Uh, I'm going to be spending some time this upcoming weekend going through uh, a lot of the training that Essie's recorded, uh, you know, to provide some feedback and stuff. And it's going to be pretty, I'm pretty excited about it because, you know, it's been a few years since we've updated it. Uh, and this has been completely redone, as Marco said, with just a ton of sites that we're going to be expanding the foot, you know, entity footprint with. So Essie's going to be doing training on each one of those sites, and that'll be the monthly updates or maybe even biweekly updates, depending on what we decide. Uh, because of the sheer number of sites that we have to expand upon, we'll probably end up doing biweekly webinars in the uh, Facebook group for that. So um, anyways, just looking forward to that, guys. If you have any questions about it, let us know. Otherwise, uh, let's get into questions. Let's do it. Got quite a few. I think this is the newest one. We still don't have the dates and times on here. Uh, let me see. It should be right after I commented, I think. Jared. Jared. Yeah, that's and right. And this one, Conrad, is just before that. I don't think we got to his. Yeah, we did, actually. You bounced. Okay. Uh, you oh, yeah I, had to, yeah, I had a call, yeah. You had a call come in, and I answered that. But I was I was uh, looking for you to reply to that one anyways. I said that we, we don't do anything in non-English, but from what I understand – um applying non-english or english drive stacks to non-english sites will still benefit is that correct that was the question uh, i mean yeah hernan and i worked on a on a swedish website so what what we did is we actually went and had the team do it in in english and then the guy who was working us he translated it in into norwegian or swedish whatever it was so, I mean, it works perfectly well. If you take the time to go then, to then go in and target your language, you might not even have to, because what we're looking for is the relevance. The AI should be able to make the connection that it's basically the same. So, yeah, I mean, the answer to that is I don't see why you can't get the MGYB services. We don't do it in your language. We will do it in English, and it's up to you to go in. For example, syndication network. It's up to you to go in and translate the profile. It won't take that long, the descriptions and everything else. So that, that would be my suggestion. You go in and, or you hire someone. Better yet, go into Upwork or something like that and, and hire a translator to go in and translate everything so that you don't have to. You can go concentrate and focus on something else. There you go. All right, so Jared's up first for this week. He says, what are your thoughts on AI content with stuff like Market Muse, Phrase, Mentor Prize, et cetera? Is it fine to use on my site with some manual editing and manually added content? Yeah, I mean, I use phrase.io is the tool that I've been using. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, I wouldn't, for money site stuff, I wouldn't just, you know, use the content that it pulls back or creates without manually editing it. Maybe for link building stuff you could, but I wouldn't do that on the money side. I would still manually edit stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, I think phrase is a good tool. I haven't, I haven't used any of the others, so I don't know, but I, I do actually use phrase uh, for, for my, some of my projects as well. So what about anybody else? 
in links is a go-to okay. because of the way that we can relate the entity, the way that we can uh, work with the entity and, and, and focus it. And I'm not going to go in depth in that because that's something that, that was presented in, in POFU Live. And I'm not going to share it out of POFU Live, but the way that, that he focuses the entity, not only with InLinks, but another tool. Uh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm slipping today because I'm forgetting all of, all of the software that, that we use, SEO Surfer or Surfer SEO. Mm. So the way that, that, that those two are used in conjunction, you can even put phrase in there. And there's quite a few other uh, software as a service, right? SaaS software that you can use and, and really, really get great content. Now, what you get is a, or what you should be getting is a template if it's for your money site. And then you would use that template to write your content. I wouldn't use what, what you're given directly. I would edit it and make sure that that is hyper-focused for the bot. That's how, I, that's how we do use the content. That's how the VA was trained to use the content. So the follow-up to that was, can this be used to automate curation for our blogs the way Bradley does it? Thanks a lot. Again, I wouldn't, you know, yes, you can use it to help kind of like, you know, augment or supplement the blog posting uh, for curated content because it will actually pull in content based upon a search query or a question um, and it will pull in the top results and it, you know, so yeah, you can use that to help with curating content, but I wouldn't use, again, not for a money site, what I use that as like automated content production, right? I wouldn't do it for that, not for money site. Uh, all of the content that I, you know, for, for my clients is manually curated by my bloggers. So we don't use any automated fashion. Now, I mean, you can streamline and make manual curation a lot more efficient. For example, we're doing a lot of, um, we started doing social posting for tree contractors. Um, and so we've been developing out the fe a Feedly account, a Feedly Pro account with uh, a ton of content. I've been paying my one of my bloggers by the hour to just find and collect good content that's relevant in all different types of categories, specific to tree services and landscaping. Um, and, you know, it's crazy because like Feedly has what they call, I think it's called Leonard, Meet Leonard or something like that. Anyways, it's uh, it's some sort of AI system that's built into it. And so when you like save content articles into a content board in Feedly, then you can go through and select, you know, certain pieces of content that are in that board and tell Leo to go find content like that. And over time, it's machine learning, right? It tra you can train the, the AI inside of Feedly to go out and find content that matches what you've trained the bot to do. And it's really cool because it will auto start automatically finding content and adding it to your content boards or your pool of available content that you can be used for curating. Um, and so we've like in just the last three weeks have amassed quite a library of content that's categorized in specific categories like, you know, tree services, general tree services, spring tree services, summer tree services, autumn tree services, winter, you know, and so on and so forth through various uh, categories. And it's great because it's giving us like this basically almost unlimited. And once you train Leo to go out and find content, similar content, um, it's basically unlimited content that you can use for curating. So it makes it a hell of a lot more efficient to uh, curate manually when all you got to do is click into like a Feedly content board and find articles that you can use for support content, for supporting content for, an art, uh, for a blog post. So again, I don't do anything automated except for perhaps finding content. Everything else is done manually, but in a very efficient manner, which is what um, Content Kingpin is all about. It's still the same processes we use. There's just Feedly has um, improved drastically over the last couple of years, especially with the addition of AI and machine learning. So, uh, you know, those are some of the things that I would recommend. And yes, you can cur curate content and focus it on the entity also and focus in on the entity also. Um, it, it, it works really well in conjunction with content uh, kingpin, all, all of the software that we mentioned earlier. All right, so the next question says, looking to get into lead gen and I have a nice domain I found aimed at contractors nationally. What's the best way to go about building lead gen properties these days? Would you just get a GMB and do mass page? Thanks guys. Uh, I mean, if you can get a GMB, it's still in my opinion, the best way to do lead gen. 
Um, good luck with that. It's very difficult to get GMBs right now. Um, it's, it's really hard to do much of anything with GMBs right now, I found, uh, as far as like new ones or making edits and stuff. Google is real suspension happy. So I would be really careful um, and good luck trying to get it. I mean, I hope you can, but I, I know it's, it's been difficult to get GMBs recently uh, or last for the last few months. So well, what do you say, Marco? Well, the, the spammed listings are not only hard to get, but hard to keep. It's hard to keep. Because yeah. when you get them, as soon as you start going and making changes, Google suspends it. And then they make you show paperwork. They make you re-verify which is the whole point. I mean, the whole point, they want to know if you're legit. And if you can't re-verify, you can't show the paperwork, then you can't get it back. I mean, it, it just doesn't make sense to try to recover something that you know isn't legitimate in the first place. Makes absolutely no sense. However, our, the method that you've always shown, the semantic mastery way, which is going to PO box with street address, still works really well. Those will sometimes get suspended, yeah. e e e even that. But it's, it's less likely to get suspended. Now guys, I'm not gonna mention the companies, but be really careful when you're using an API <laughs> to publish content into your GMB, to publish scheduled content, because some of those have a muddied IP. Google has tagged it with suspicious activity and it's a really good way to get suspended. Right? So be really careful what it is, what you're doing, what it is that you're doing with, with those. To this day, the original training in local GMB Pro says add a manager. Never, never again go back in as, as the owner. I stand by that. I've only had one, one GMB suspended with a, with a manager. So out of, out of all of this, out of everything that, that, that we've been doing, the way that has worked for me, the original training in local GMB Pro, you add a manager and let the manager go in and and – like, well, I'm not going to go through the whole training, but try not to make any changes once you've, once you've sent for the pin. Once you have that pin, like you should never go in again except for, to post and add pictures, and that's it. Never again do anything else, no changes, because it will get suspended if, if, if you make major changes, uh, especially NAP, category that it's in, any of those, even slight changes. I once added a video to one, or the VA added, one, added a video, and it, it, it wasn't even any, it's not anything major adding a video and he got suspended. But then again, it, it wasn't something that, that was truly legit. It was, uh, as a matter of fact, post office box with street, with street address, but we recovered it. We were able to recover that. Wow. So just be really careful. Just be really careful what, what, what you do because Google is out for blood right now. They're suspending a whole bunch of them and they'd rather suspend you and have you legitimize the GMB than to not suspend you and let you get a, get away with an illegitimate or a spam GMB. That's the way that, that they're doing this right now. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting because I had a, a client or I have a client, excuse me, that when I plugged it into uh, a GMB post scheduler through the API, it showed that there was like no physical address associated with the GMB and it was weird. And so <clears throat> I actually reached out to GMB support. And I was wondering why I was having such a hard time getting the, the, the GMB to, to move correctly or to move like, or to respond to the things that I was doing to it, like they normally do. And once I discovered that there was an incorrect backend um, physical location associated with it, or really none at all. It, in when I, when I plugged it in the API, it would show you, and by the way, you can figure that out where the location is of a GMB by plugging it into something like right local has a GeoGrid search report tool now. So if you get the CID um, for service area business GMB URL and plug it in, it'll show you the center point where where it's where Google thinks that the business is registered. And it was interesting because this was like way out in the middle of like nowhere. It was weird. It was like it's like in a park or some shit. Uh, like seriously like a like a some crazy big national park or something. So there's nothing there, no buildings or anything. And so I was wondering why it wouldn't respond. And um, when I plugged it in the API, that's what revealed that to me. And that's when I started like realizing that some GMBs don't have on the back end an actual physical location tied or it's incorrect, for, especially for service area businesses. So anyways, I contacted Google support and uh, they said, go ahead and change your, like I got this reply back from Google support and said, go ahead and add the GMB or the um, 
address. Even though it was a service area business, they said, go ahead and add the address, but it's likely going to, and the support told me this, it's likely going to trigger re-verification. And so I contacted the client and I said, this is what they replied. I say we go ahead and do it because the MAPS listing is not responding the way that it should be. And I feel like we're going to constantly be fighting an uphill battle. They said, go ahead and do it. Uh, so I did it. And um, fortunately, in that case, because they have a physical location that was verifiable, all that was required, though, was a postcard, just the use, standard U.S. mail verification. And um, within seven days or so, we had the card and verified it. And it's uh, it's responding better. It's still going to take a little bit of time, but it's um, it's coming back. So if you can't like what Marcus said, if you can't re-verify something, don't even bother trying is really the point. So. Uh, the follow-up question, would you just get GMB and do mass page? I don't do mass page stuff, period. I just don't. I don't like to do it. It's not that it can't work. It might work, uh, but I'm not the person to ask, or I don't I don't know that we are. Maybe Mar maybe Marco could shed some insight on it. Um, Lance, Lance Solutions Network is a mass page built with a WordPress, like front end with WordPress pages. Mass page built, it's, it's there to this. I made it public. It's there for people to spam, to report. It gets, you see it, it gets leads to this day because I post them in the group whenever so. one comes in where, in a place where I'm not working. I posted one from Hawaii the other day. I posted another one from Arizona. There were some from Florida that I, that uh, Chris Pilwin got, Chris G got some. So if you do it right, there's a reason why a mass paid build can't work. But it, it, it just requires a little bit more work than, than, than what people are willing to put in. Yeah. to kind of, uh, in, in air quotes, to kind of legitimize the build. So Hector's up. He says, saw your old webinar about Damon Nelson's RSS Master and eager to access it. Would it cause footprint issues, though, if I use the same AdSense or affiliate code for each site? Or should I get a separate account for each? I don't know about AdSense. Uh, I just don't, see, I don't do anything like that. So I, I just don't know. Does anybody here have an answer for him about that? Let me... Okay. Sorry, I can't answer that. I just don't know. Um, as far as AdSense, I don't think affiliate code would cause a problem. I don't, I don't know because again, I just don't do affiliate stuff, guys. I haven't even attempted affiliate marketing in two or three years other than, you know, occasionally we do a promotion for semantic mastery. I just, I just do local stuff. So I, I so he, he wants to use RSS masher to, to push content into multiple websites. And in those multiple websites, he is going to use the same, AdSense code from the same account? That's what he's asking. Oh, uh, that looks like a really good way to lose your account. Well, there you go. So you have an answer. That's what I was asking. Um, no, no. I, I mean, I don't really. It, 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 to me, that doesn't seem like a very good idea. Yeah. And it's not something that, that, that it does. I mean, it seems like the, the footprint is the AdSense code, Google picking that out. And then you'd have a problem with Google suspends the account. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. There's got to be, I'm sure there's some groups in Facebook and shit like that, that where people do a whole bunch of heavy uh, AdSense stuff. That would, that would be what I suggest, or even go to YouTube and do some searches. I'm sure you can find the answers you're looking for. This is probably just not the place for it, Hector. And um, it's just not something that really any of us do. So uh, no. sorry, we can't answer that one. He says, what's the best way to monetize these auto blogs safely? Would it be good to buy phone verified Gmail accounts and run them in isolated browsers for this purpose. Thanks for all the great SEO stuff you share. Yeah, I mean, I think that's good practice anyways. I mean, for example, I'm still using Browsio, the old desktop version. Uh, it still works if you right click and open in system Chrome. That's the only way that it works, but it works. And uh, I got, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of profiles in there. And I don't even change IPs. Like it's all just my IP, but it keeps the browsing sessions. A gross ghost browser is one. Another one's called Session Box. That's one that I'm looking into. If I eventually switch from Browsio, and eventually I will, I'll probably try Session Box. Um, I know Ghost Browser is good. We've talked about that a lot. It's a little bit more expensive, but I know it's really good. Um, so I, I think it's best practice to do that anyways, to keep sessions in browsers specific to accounts and that kind of stuff. But um, you know, so yeah, having different Gmail accounts associated with each one of those projects, I think is probably a pretty, pretty wise thing to do, if you ask me. Um, anybody want to comment on that? No, I totally agree. That's, that would be the same thing to do. Isolate each account. 
yeah. So that you don't get tagged for, for any sort of uh, footprint. Okay, next one. Manny, the SEO says, hey guys, I got a question about citations for a business that operates in different countries like US and Canada. I would like to secure some citations from other countries, but the business doesn't have a physical office there as they are a service business. Uh, is there a way to get a virtual office address so I can get citations and potentially a GMB? If not a GMB, citations would be plenty. Thanks for your help. Um, yeah, I mean, again, I, I think having a GMB is great uh, for many reasons. If you could get a second location for it, like in the, you know, like you said, I guess for in Canada, for example, if you don't have a physical office in Canada, physical office, excuse me, or location in Canada, but you would like to um, build citations there as well, then yeah, you could add a second location as long as, as we just mentioned already today, many times, if you can get a verifiable address, um, that's what I would recommend. It's, you know, it would certainly help. Um, and then you could have two sets of citations. I would tie that to a, sec a separate, that the second GMB, I would tie to a location page specific for that second location. In other words, you don't want, if you've got two GMBs, right? You don't want both GMBs pointing to the same page, like the root domain or the homepage of the, the, the site, um, because that could cause some ambigu ambiguity, right? Some NAP issues. So it would be, because it's gonna be the same company name, right? And so as long as you have uh, only one data point in name, address, and phone number as the same or website URL, because it's really four points, right? We always call it NAP, name, address, and phone number, but it also includes the website address. So there's really four data points. And as long as not, you're, not, you're on not sharing more than one data point across those four, then you can do that. So in other words, if the company name is going to be the same, which it should be, unless you added a location modifier to the company name, which you can do. But if you want to keep the company the same in both locations, that's fine. But then you should have a separate physical address, separate phone number for each location, and a separate web page. So if you have a primary one that the website URL is tied to the home or the root, you know, the home page or the root domain, that's perfectly fine. But on the second location, you should have the website tied to a specific location page for that location. Does that make sense? So again, you want to have only, only have one common data point across those four, name, address, phone number, and website, or else you can create NAP uh, ambiguity issues, which um, will cause both locations to not rank as well, if that makes sense. Anybody want to comment on that? Yeah, I mean, you can get virtual office addresses all over the US that right? you can rent an office and have the, 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 the postcard physically mailed to that to that address, there's multiple ways to do that. I mean, there's even a uh, Craigslist that you can use yeah. for that. I mean, uh, Craigslist, it, it, it's worked for me in the past. I, I tried, like not too long ago, I tried one in New York City and, and got a doorman to, to get me. Uh, I verified GMB. So it can still be done because you just have to be creative about how you, how you go and get them to kind of legitimize what it is that you're doing. And then understand that if you lose it, it's, it's spammed. There's nothing you can do. Try If at first you don't succeed, try again. So that, that, that would be the only way I can think of. I would know nothing about Canada right? to, to know how the post office works there, whether you can get one there, but you could still get someone to, to verify a, a, a business for you. Or those virtual offices, man, virtual offices. They work really well. Yeah, Chris G was, he provided me, or I don't, I don't have it to share with you guys um i'd have to go search for it but there are virtual mailbox services now that you know you can register a physical location right so to speak and they'll receive the mail and scan it and send you an email with the images of the mail so you might want to try i've never tried that to be honest with you i've never tried it so i don't know if that would work or not but you know it's worth a shot right so you might want to consider that all right next is phineas and ferb <laughs> Okay. <laughs> hey, yes, I'm wondering if we are using AWS or another cloud provider like Microsoft for CDN. Can we take URLs from AWS and all our images and build tiered web 2.0s to them to pass juice to the money site? Or could this cause a penalty? Curious to get your opinion on this. You know, that's an old tactic. Jimmy Kelly talked about that way back in, I think, 2000 and what was it? 14 when I went to uh, the certification, Network Empire certification. I think that was 2014. 
anyways, he was talking about that way back then when we were doing domain authority stacking, right? DAS, uh, which worked like freaking gangbusters back then. It was crazy how good that worked. And that's where we would do like subdomain manipulation and all kinds of stuff that we would do. And that was one of the things that I remember was taught way, way back then, which was seven years ago now, uh, was taking the CDN URLs and using those like for images and files and all that and just hammering them with backlinks and pushing domain authority into the entity or the, the, the root domain at that point. We weren't really talking about entity-based SEO then. And it, uh, and it worked. I don't know if that still would have much of an effect now because I just don't really do domain authority stacking anymore. Um, we, we do our methods, which is about relevancy and entity and art. Um, so I don't know if that would work or not. Uh, what do you think, Marco? Yeah, I don't see why it wouldn't. Because you, you're building tiered web 2.0s to, to, to pass link power through. So the, 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 the tiered web 2.0s would absorb most of it. Or if you're building it into the AWS or, or Microsoft or whatever the, the CDN of choice is, it would still absorb like any of the negative. But I mean, to me, nothing like Google, nothing works like Google. That's why we're in the belly of the beast. Not, Google doesn't trust anything like it trusts Google. And so we'll stay in there for as long as we can until we can't, and then we'll figure out something else. Yeah. Hey, it's worth a, worth a test. Yeah, sure. I mean, all of these, see, people come and, and they, they come with these ideas, these theories, and the standard answer is, Try it and see. The, the, the only way that you would know is if you try it and see. Because if, if you have us or you wait for us in the heavy hitter club, of course, if you wait for us to try it, we have a long list of things to try because we're already getting results. And so what we would have to do is put it on the list because it isn't necessary. With what we're doing right now, the system that we have in place and how we do it, we get results time and again. It's a repeatable process that we've built that works period and so to build all of these different things right now doesn't make sense because we don't really need them it's nice to have them in the chamber in case something happens and so we do have all of these other things that we could turn to if something happens but right now it it, it just isn't necessary and hasn't been for i mean for, for quite a while what is it going on six years now that we've been using our methods and our system and the way that we do things that's right. So Gordon's up. What's up, Gordon? It's been a while. He says, hey, guys, I need your help with two quick questions. Does the GMB service area you select in your GMB listing have any effect on the geographical search area that gets Google to show your listing in a three pack? It does to a degree. Uh, you know, Google tightened its proximity filters shit, a year and a half ago now. Time flies, I guess. It's been a while, but it used to be that, yeah, you could get your maps listing to show in your designated service area relatively easy right it, it wasn't that difficult especially for like again tree contractors typically have a very big service area like multiple counties and so i would list all that right and a lot of the times i could get for some of the uh you know gmbs that were really powered up really authoritative they would rank three cities away right like because it was you know might be in an in, in an adjacent county altogether right and it was crazy, um, but that all kind of changed a, a, a year and a half ago now, maybe two years ago, whatever. Whenever the proximity filters got a lot stricter or tighter, narrower, so to speak. And so now it's a lot more difficult. Yes, it can, it can still be done, but it takes a lot of effort and time, um, cumulative effort, in other words, in order to get that to occur. And that's what we teach at Local GMB Pro. So, uh, you know, it is possible, but it does take consistent repeated effort in order to, and in a very specific way in order to do that. So what I'm saying is, is you can put a large service area, right? And it might be relevant to that business, but Google is likely only going to show the maps listing for people that are in close proximity at the time that they search for that service, unless you can force it to, uh, you know, what Mark always calls expand the centroid by doing the methods that we teach in local GMB pro. But it's difficult to do that. Uh, I mean, it's not that it can't be done. It certainly can, but it's difficult to do that. So, you know, again, Google is going to really show the maps listing to people that are in close proximity when they're searching, especially if there's other businesses. Like if it's a very obscure business that there's not a lot of other companies that provide that product or service, 
then yeah, you can get a maps listing to appear from, I mean, you know, tens or hundreds of miles away even, that's true, but it's very rare. If it's a type of business that is common, then, and there's multiple providers within, you know, a, a, you know, there's multiple competitors, I should say, then it's, then it's likely that the Google My Business profile is not going to show up in adjacent towns because of the proximity filter. And that's what I've been experiencing. So I typically now really just focus in on immediate local area, um, at least initially. And once I start getting that to rank, then we start targeting, you know, expanded areas through content marketing, GMB posts, and all that other stuff that we teach in GMB, uh, excuse me, local GMB pro. Marco, what do you say? Activity, relevance, trust, and authority, right? The more trusted and authoritative you become, the more the decentroid will expand. How you do that is in local GMB Pro. There has to be a reason why Google will display you to someone that's further, the, further away than the, they, they should be. There has to be a reason for that proximity factor not to kick in. We did that with, with uh, DC Plummet, right? It's a case study uh, in, uh, in our YS Academy Reloaded, but it works perfectly well here where we built such massive trust and authority into that, that it became the keyword for the niche. And so because it has that trust and authority, it gets displayed to people outside of what you would expect the radius to be from the business centroid. The way that, that we did it, as I've, as I've said before, in, in New York City was a bike messenger service. The way that we did it in, in LA is Uber drivers. And I'm not going to say how it was done. I'm just telling you that's what we used to just create massive trust and authority to relate, like create relevance between where we wanted Google to display to people, to, to, to give us impressions, to put our results in front of people, to get us in the map pack in front of people. And then, I mean, if you're there, one, two, one or two, sometimes three people start clicking on it. And then that reinforces the trust and authority that Google is giving you, and it creates even more. The whole process for that is in local GMB Pro. I won't get into it here. Yeah, and I'm testing, you know, I've talked about many, many times over the last year and a half, two years here on uh, Hump Day Hangouts about click-through spam bots and not using them. And I've just been using paid traffic from Google. Um, but I... I, am, I have started testing Michael Bose's uh, Viper tools recently because he's been getting a lot of good results um, from, you know, people that I know in the space. And um, so I've actually just recently started testing with that. And that's something that I'm hoping, I don't have any results yet, but I'm hoping that uh, I can get similar results to some of the people that I've chatted with about it. And that could be something that, could, I mean, you could do it with paid traffic, which is what I've been doing, but, you know, you can specify like certain clicks to come to for uh, within a certain geographic area, right? From a topically relevant audience or an audience that would be relevant to the, you know, what you're sending them to. Um, and that, that works to, to kind of help um, with that stuff too. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually testing a tool right now. Like I said, Michael's tool, don't have any results to share yet, but um, you know, I'm hoping that it works well. And if it does, I will let you guys know for sure. All right, the next question was, do you have to be careful when creating direct backlinks to GMB listings as you do when doing direct backlinks to the websites or can you create massive direct backlinks without using a very small number of buffer web 2.0 sites as tier one layer, and maybe even as a tier two layer? And what parts of the GMB listings should be targeted with backlinks to get the most SEO bang for the buck? Thank you very much for your help as usual. It's always greatly appreciated. That seems almost like a consultation question, Gordon. <laughs> it gets very intricate on, on how and yeah. One of the things we try not to do in Hump Day Hangouts is, is don't discuss the how. The how is what people pay us a whole lot of money for. We can tell you what we do, but that, that this is kind of getting into how, isn't it? I don't know, unless you want to answer, because I'm not. Yeah, no, I mean, I just, I, I don't have any problem running backlinks directly to GMB stuff or tier one entity assets, period. I don't like to run direct backlinks to the money site, but to tier one entity assets, we just, I, I hammer everything. <laughs> so that's my answer. And you want to comment on that anymore? You can hammer it. That's as far as I'm going to go. Okay. And that's what I do, Gordon, just as a short answer. All tier one entity assets. I just Fair game. It yep. Just hammer it. So. 
And that's why we do what we do with the SEO Shield guy. That's why it's called the SEO Shield, right? It's the SEO firewall. It shields the money site. So you can do all that really nasty off-page SEO stuff to your shield, not to the money site. <laughs> that's the whole point, right? Yeah. So we keep the money site pristine because the first place right. they're going to go look is the money site. Yeah, the only thing I run directly to the money site besides syndication posts, like syndication network uh, backlinks or press releases, um, and that's that's pretty much it. Uh, you know, occasionally I'll buy some guest post links um, from a, a really good provider. They're expensive though, but even then, it's only it's it's only very very specific circumstances. Other than that, we just use the same methods that we teach. So yeah, I do absolutely nothing to the money. Site. Sometimes, sometimes a press release, a press release, but I, I'll usually run press releases uh, elsewhere to tier yeah. one. So BB's up with a list of questions as usual. What's up, BB? He says, hey guys, you said there is way, there is a way to schema, to add schema, I guess, through the Google Tag Manager, but how the, how the Gbot understands the page that there's no placement in the HTML. It'll render it. So it's a script, right? The container will display the scripts within the container in Google Tag Manager. Now, Google even says in their help files that that is not the preferred way to display JSON LD uh, structured data uh, on a website. Doing it through Tag Manager is not the preferred way as per Google's own help files or documentation. However, it still works. And there's certain circumstances where that's the only way you can do it. So for example, I have a, a website, one of my sites that has a website theme that there's no way to add code to the home page. It's really weird. It's the home page is like built into the theme and there's no, there's just no way to add code to the home page other than through Google Tag Manager. Or if I were to hack the JSON LD directly into the theme files, which I don't like to do. So uh, in that case, I just added the structured data organization schema in that case uh, to the container code and Google Tag Manager. And yes, it will render. Now, if you go do a view page source, all you're gonna see is the GTM Tag Manager, uh, excuse me, the container code, the Google Tag Manager container code. That's all you're gonna see. But when you do a structured data testing tool test on the home page, it will render the JSON-LD code in the, um, in the site. So, so you can actually see it in the Google, excuse me, the structured data testing tool. So yes, again, it's not the preferred method. If you can add the structured data directly to the code of the site using SEO Ultimate Pro, which is what I use mostly. Sometimes uh, use like a header and footer plugin. Um, sometimes themes will have the ability to add uh, code to specific pages or site-wide globally. So you can add it there. Although I recommend only adding, you know, like organization schema to the home page or whatever, just as per best practices. So, uh, but you know, in those cases where you can't, Google Tag Manager is, a viable alternative, even if Google says it isn't, because it still reads and recognizes the code. Any comments on that? No, I mean, that, that, that's a perfect answer because that, that's exactly what it is. Google, it will render on the website as everything renders as HTML eventually, right? Mm -hmm. All it is, all the Google Tag Manager does is it sets up a JavaScript call between Google servers and your server to, to render the HTML. That's all it is. So question number two, did the bounce rate increase in your sites after the passage index update? Don't know. Haven't looked at it. Uh, it's not a metric that I typically chase. Um, so I don't know. I can't answer that. Anybody have a? No, I, I haven't seen any changes. So, and my metric is calls. My metric is, is form fills. My metric is what's going on. That's so any it. thoughts, any thoughts or takeaways on the new update? No, I, Honestly, I don't have any. Sorry. Uh, usually, I don't even know about updates until somebody like you brings it to our attention. <laughs> so, and that, and I mean that. I don't stay plugged in to all that shit. I don't. I just look. If I start seeing some significant fluctuations in my own properties or client properties, then I go in and start digging into it. But if I don't see any major fluctuations, why bother? I've got other things to work on. You know what I mean? So, I honestly, I can't give you an answer to that. I don't have any opinion on it. Um, or for the new update that that will come out in May for speed testing. No, I mean, it's, I, you know, page speed has been, people have said it's been a metric for a long time, but I really haven't seen that. It's, but it's good for user experience, right? So what I'm saying is page speed for an SEO metric, a ranking metric is not something that I've seen it really have much of an effect on. Um, even though people have been saying that for years, I really haven't seen that in my own experience. 
But for user experience, it absolutely makes a difference, um, especially on mobile. Like if a, if, a, if, a, if a page loads really slow on mobile, like people get irritated and they back out and go somewhere else. And, um, and so that's really important, I think. Um, but as far as like what I know, I, I did read some on that they, I guess it was um, ex the experience update or whatever they're calling it, where it's, it's, it covers a number of things, page speed being one of them. Uh, you know, I really don't have a, a prediction on that because I just don't know. We'll see what happens when it comes. Any comments on that? The whole point of entity-based worryless SEO is not to worry about those things. And again, I'll go back to just measuring the metrics that matter, which is the for, are the form fills steady and are the phone calls steady and is the client's bottom line increasing? That, that my job is that. My job is not to worry about uh, bounce rate or anything else like that. Unless I see a problem with any of the metrics that really matter, then I'm gonna go and see if anything has happened to affect that. And then I'm on it, but by the time I'm, I, I'm on that, I'm past the period where everyone's panicked and everyone has gone and done whatever they could to try to affect it, gotten themselves in trouble, maybe even sandbox. I'm going to be past all that. I'm going to be past that point. So I'm going to let the dust settle and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to start checking. I'm going to look at the data and see what it was that happened and why. And then I'm going to go in and fix it. I haven't needed to do that. Literally, in, in well, I did just recently, but it, it, it had nothing to do with, with, with a core update. But I did have to recently go in and fix something, and, and it, it came right back. Everything comes right back. And what we continue seeing since Google started announcing updates until now, when we've been applying these methods, is Google doesn't update, and our shit gets even better. It gets stronger. It, we, we get more traffic. We get uh, better results for our clients. Our clients, I mean, some, sometimes, oh, what was that? It, it, it's 10x sometimes, going from, from 8K a month to 80K, going, I don't, I don't know, from, from 100 to 150K. I mean, those kinds of results, going from uh, 7, 8 million to nearly 30 million a month. Those are the results that we're talking about. I don't care about anything else. I don't care about Google. And I'm going to stand by what I have said all along, that the art of art, the art of activity relevance, trust and authority trumps everything on the web. Sweet. So D, D is up. He says, what's up, D? He says, proud new. He's a mastermind member and has been for like many years, I think since the beginning. <laughs> so anyways. He says, proud new user of Go High Level through Semantic Mastery today. Thanks for all the info, Bradley. You're welcome, D. And um, it's a great, great tool. Um, let me know when you want me to cover more stuff in the mastermind about it. Because, in fact, I've, got, I've been building an app in high level for my contractors, my tree contractors, that I'm going to be selling as a SaaS. So soft, software as a service, right? And it's, it's, it's great because it's a low barrier to entry, low cost but super, super valuable tool that they can use to help them get more leads from their existing web assets, manage those leads through automated conversations and then uh, and through like a pipeline, a lead, a lead pipeline inside high level and then also solicit reviews and basically build up their reviews. So it helps with uh, reputation and it's a really cool app. And I've just finished, uh, well, I'm not 100% done with it. I, I'm, gonna, I'm meeting with my, one of my first tree contractor who's gonna be beta testing it for me um, either on Friday or Saturday, I'm still waiting on a reply back, but this week. And so next week it will be in use by a tree contractor so that I can start working out the bugs and stuff. But that's going to be one of the, my leading products for my new agency is that app because it's only, I'm, I'm only charging $200 a month. High level says you should charge 300 a month, but I'm doing it for a specific reason anyways. Uh, and I think it's going to be a, a really, really good tool to get my foot in the door at a low cost with, with contractors, right? So anyways, let me know if you want me to cover more of that in the um, mastermind, I'm happy to do so. And I'm in fact, next Thursday, when I have my next mastermind webinar, um, my tree contractor who's gonna be beta testing it for me and working with me to work out the bugs. He, uh, you know, he will have about a week's worth of use out of it. So I'll, I'll have some pretty good experience to share with you at that point. By the way, guys, if you're curious, go to semanticmastery.com slash high level. Um, it's, it's an outstanding platform. It's an automation platform for 
agencies essentially. And it's uh, it's a really, really powerful tool. There's a hell of a learning curve. There is no question, but it's worth putting the time and effort into learning because um, it can really help you to grow your business. I'm using it for right now, primarily prospecting for my own business. And I mean, it's just great to set up all these automations that just run like clockwork day in and day out to fill your pipeline full of leads. And it's just, it's crazy. I've only been running it for three weeks now and I've got, you know, 60, 70, 60 to 70 some leads in my pipeline that are in various stages of uh, communication, but it's just, it's crazy guys. It's a, uh, it's a really, really, really good tool. And I'm doing a ton of, I'm going to be doing, I'm developing training right now that will become the semantic mastery mastermind training, like a, like a 90 day or a 12 week program and high level is an integral part of that. So uh, if anybody's interested in that, go check out semanticmastery.com slash high level. It's a 14 day free trial. That is our affiliate link. But then come join the mastermind because um, I'm hoping by, you know, the third quarter of this year to have the training that I'm going to be rolling out to the mastermind uh, available and ready. And um, once that is launched, we're going to kind of restructure how you can even join the mastermind, the cost, everything. So uh, if any of that interests you, now would probably be a good time to get in. <laughs> so you're grandfathered. Anyways. Following up on that, he says, I have a client that needs a merge of GMB accounts. I have been trying to get this done by Google for the last four months with no luck. I keep filling out the GMB form they provide and I don't get any response. Yeah, it's weird. I'm so hit or miss with Google support. Um, sometimes they're really responsive like they were with that client that I just mentioned. Um, we had contacted them about adding a physical location to a service area business. They were actually really responsive in that case. But in other cases... It, I go three weeks without getting a, a reply back. So I, I, I understand your frustration, D. He says, this is a legit business that moved and we do not have access to the previous listing as another company did it. Is there any other method to try to get this done that you know of? Okay, here's one thing, D, I would suggest because you're in the mastermind is post this as a, like asking for help in the mastermind with and, and, and describe the issue because we, there's a lot of local Google local guides in our mastermind. Myself included, Wayne Clayton, uh, Greg Drebert. There's a bunch of them in there that, you know, in the past when we've had similar weird issues occur, we get high level local guides to go in and suggest edits. And uh, after, a, you know, a handful of that, those occur, then oftentimes the edits, will, the edits will go through. So let's start a discussion in the mastermind. That's what it's for anyways, D. Um, and see, see, you know, we put all our heads together. We ought to, we ought to, be able to come up with something to help you or at least give you some additional ideas. That's what the mastermind is for. Any comments on that, guys? Yeah, ask Marco anything mastermind is tomorrow, right? So just come in and ask that question because I do have some some suggestions for you on, on what would work for this because someone just went, went through this and it was a, a nightmare. And the way that you're trying to do it, just filling out the form, not going to work. Yeah. They are not going to respond to that at all, ever. <laughs> you never get anything when you fill out that form. And they tell you, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll call you right, right back. Never call. You never get any response. You never get any emails. And, and I'll, I'll give this in, in, in public. Uh, you're not the one that should be doing this. That GMB, if it's legit, has an owner with all the documentation, that should be the person, not you. The owner, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree with, with that. The documentation should be the one that's initiating all of the contact. But let's talk tomorrow. Let's talk tomorrow so I can talk to you in, in depth on, on, on how, to, how to get through this. Yeah, there you go. And that's, that's good advice. Um, you know, from the, the primary owner's account, if you contact support, you might get a response that yep. way. So that's, owner, that's not the manager, not, not, never the manager. All right. Now, last question, which is a great, and by the way, hey, Jordan, yo, 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 you pretty people. I don't know who you're talking to, Jordan, but. Uh, anyways, D's last question says, is local Viking okay to use for GMB posting or is it one to be aware of? All right. I talked about this for the last couple of months. I'd switched to local Viking about two months ago, but, um, you know, according to some crazy shit that happened last week, apparently, um, I have canceled my subscription and I'm just not going to use it anymore. I'm, I'm concerned about the API connection being a flag. I'm not saying whether it is or not. I don't know, but I have revoked local Viking access to my GMBs and I'm not going to continue to use it. And it's just because it's better safe than sorry. And I'd rather be overly cautious 
And I'm afraid that that might be a flag um, because of some of the issues that they had happened a week ago. And it wasn't just them. There was a couple others as well. Um, and so I've literally revoked access. There's only one app that I'm using right now for posting to GMB that doesn't, it, that's all it does. It doesn't, it, it doesn't connect in any other way other than to allow for posting. And it's called fan booster, fanbooster.com. There's some limitations with that app though. So, and I'm, all, I'm only testing that across a, like three locations right now. All my other locations, they're going to be manually posted to for right now by my VA logging into as a manager to those GMB locations one at a time and posting manually, which sucks but it is what it is. And right now I'm afraid to use any of these like SEO based GMB post schedulers. A social media based post scheduler, I think is different because it's not scrutinized the same way that the SEO tools are by Google. At least that's my assumption. It's logical. I don't know if that's true or not, but Fan Booster is a social media posting app. That's the one that I'm testing with right now. And that is pretty cool. There are some limitations, but there are also some really cool benefits to that. Um, so, I mean, I'll share more information about that when I have it, but again, just to be hundred percent transparent, I have canceled my subscription to local biking and it sucks because I had just worked it into my processes for my team and I had to cancel it like right after we got really good at using it, fucking okay, canceled it, but it is what it is. Welcome to the world of online marketing, right? So any comments on that before we wrap it up? My motto is always protect what's making you money always protected better to be safe than sorry some of those apis were tagged for suspicious activity i'm not going to say which one uh which ones it was more than one they were just getting right. heavily spammed they were being used for other for purposes other than posting and so i mean it is what it is every time that that, that we I'm gonna, I'm gonna put myself in it spammers get hold of something it gets muddied it gets dirty google starts looking in and their job is simply, we're going to get rid of it. So we'll just knock it all out. Yeah. We just knock it all out. We don't care. They'd rather do that than take a chance of, uh, of letting the spammers continue spamming. That's the same thing that they're doing with, with GMB, period. Prove that if it gets suspended, prove that it's real. Yeah. That, that's it. They don't care. They don't care if it was real to start with. Prove that it's real. That's it. Yeah. And I want to thank you, Marco, again for bringing that to my attention last week because um, I, I immediately went in and revoked access and fortunately knock on wood, I still got my assets. So anyway, thanks guys. We'll see y'all next week.